Well, hey there, and welcome back to Homeless History. Now, in this video, I'm getting all cranked up to show you how to answer the quantitative data FRQ for AP government. So if you're ready to get them brain cows milked with them, let's get to it. All right, well, let's just jump right in. Now, in the quantitative data FRQ, they're going to present you with a visual stimulus, which will be in the form of a graph or a chart or a map or some other representation of numbers. And your job is to interpret those numbers and answer the four prompts that they give you. And look, just between you and me, this is probably the easiest of the three FRQs. So if you're the kind of person who tends to overthink things, then grab your brain by the shoulders, slap it in the face, and say, stop it. Okay, now after the stimulus, you'll see four parts to the question labeled A, B, C, and D. And the advice I have for the quantitative data question is the same I had for the concept application question. For each of those prompts, you need to write your answers in complete sentences. Don't just throw a single word in there or write in bullet points. If the prompt begins with the word identify, then you really only need one sentence naming what they're asking for. If you see a prompt beginning with any other word, like explain or describe or whatever, then you're gonna need to write a little bit more. And the general rule of thumb is two to three three content-rich sentences. And remember two things, be specific with your evidence and relate it back to the prompt. Okay, enough with that. Let's look at the quantitative data question from the 2021 AP government exam, and I'll show you how to earn all the points. First, have a look at this chart that they give you. They're comparing House elections in Ohio in 1982 and 2012. You can see here in 1982 that the two circles are just about the same. The same amount of representatives who got votes also got seats in the House. And that makes perfect sense, but in 2012, it's a different story. Here, Democrats won 48% of the the votes, but only got 25% of the seats, to which I say, what? So something strange is going on here, and you bet your sweet bippy that they're going to ask me to explain that weirdness. But before they ask me to do all that explaining, they're going to give us two soft toss questions, and seriously, letters A and B are just really free points if you can understand the numbers that they give you. Look at A. Identify the party that won the highest percentage of votes and seats in 1982. Remember, slap that overactive brain in the face. This is just as easy as it sounds. 1982, who won the most votes? votes and seats. As you can see here, clearly it's the Democrats. And since the prompt begins with identify, all you have to do is name the party. But you're not just going to write Democrats and then move on to part B. You're going to write it in a complete sentence. The Democrats won the highest percentage of votes and seats in 1982. Done. I just earned that point. Now, part B. Describe a change between the percentage of seats won by Republicans in 1982 and 2012. Okay, it's clear that there is a change, so now we just need to describe what we see in words. So you could say something like this. In 1982, the same proportion of representatives who earned votes won seats in the House. However, in 2012, roughly half of the Democrats who received votes won seats in the House. And that's it. I just earned the point. All I did was describe what I saw in the pie charts. Okay, now that your confidence is disproportionately high, they're about to come in and bring you down back to earth. So if you slapped your brain in the face earlier, now is the time to repent and make up because you're gonna need it for parts C and D, which are going to ask you for an explanation of those changes. Part C says, draw a conclusion about the difference in percentage of votes won and seats won in Ohio in the 2012 election as shown in the chart. Okay, when the AP overlords say, draw a conclusion, they want you to tie all the evidence together and provide an explanation for it. So let's do that in two sentences. First sentence, there was a significant difference between House elections in 19. And 2012. All right, easy enough. Now let's explain why that might have occurred. The difference in votes and seats won in 1982 and 2012 suggests that partisan gerrymandering on the part of Republicans could have played a role. Okay, so you drew a conclusion and then you explained a potential cause for that conclusion. Now let's move on to part D, which says this. Explain why the information in the charts could pose a challenge to participatory democracy. Okay, now here's where it really pays to know your vocabulary. Like they don't tell you what participatory democracy is, they just assume you know, and since it's mentioned explicitly in the curriculum, they can assume that. So in this case, if you don't know, participatory democracy emphasizes the voice and role of ordinary citizens in the political process. So if we're right that gerrymandering had occurred, then how might that challenge participatory democracy? Well, how about this? The data in the chart show that Republicans earned roughly the same amount of votes in both years, but won a disproportionate amount of seats in 2012. If this is a result of gerrymandering, this can challenge participatory democracy by weakening people's political efficacy. If voters think the system is rigged and thus their vote does not count, they will be less likely to vote in future elections and participatory democracy will diminish. Okay, so notice two things about this answer. Number one, it answers the prompt by demonstrating how these numbers and how gerrymandering might affect participatory democracy. And second, it makes sure to tie the answer back to the prompt. Always, always, always tie your answer back to the prompt. All right, that's the quantitative data FRQ for AP government. Click right here to grab my ultimate review packet, which is going to help you get an A in your class and a five on your exam in May. And if this video helped you, you want me to keep making them, then you could let me know that by subscribing. I'm Lerout.